I just had a baby, a few months old, and it's trying to sleep. But it can't, because I have one of the noisiest neighbors on this planet Earth. And if he revs his car engine one more time past 9 o'clock at night, I'm going to do something that I'm going to regret. Okay, so here's the dealio. I'm a 26-year-old guy and recently married, and my wife and I just had our first baby, who's only 5 months of age. We bought our first family home in what we thought was a quiet little quaint neighborhood that we absolutely loved. Both my wife and I work from home, so it's imperative that we have peaceful environments. We don't ask much, just a peaceful life. But then there's our neighbor, let's call him McQueen. McQueen has the car that could have been, well, pulled straight out of a Fast and the Furious movie. I'm no expert on vehicles, but even I can tell that the exhaust on it must have been modified. Every time it roars, its life just sounds like the jet engine taking off. And guess what? He has the oddest schedule. He leaves early in the morning, right around the time that we just managed to get our baby back to bed, and returns late at night once again, just when we've lulled our little one to sleep, leaving us on a nightmarish sleeping schedule. Our baby, needless to say, does not appreciate this vehicular monstrosity. She's been waking up terrified, crying inconsolably every time McQueen starts or parks the car. It's a nightmare, and my wife and I genuinely think the sound scares our kid, who, who knows what lasting impacts this could have on her. Now, neither my wife nor I are confrontational. We're the kind of people who would rather endure inconvenience than create a scene. Our daily routine involves work, taking care of our child, and the occasional errands outside the house. We love our occasional date nights, which have sadly been a few and far in between since our baby arrived. Most times, we just want to stay in our bubble. I tried dropping subtle hints when I ran into McQueen. Once while fetching the mail, I mentioned how loud cars in the neighborhood can be so disruptive, especially to little babies. He just laughed, saying something like, <laughs> Oh man, babies cry all the time, don't they? Another time, I commented on how impressive his car's engine sounded and whether it's street legal. McQueen just winked and said, Ha, huh, well, she's special. My wife and I are at our wit's end. We've considered soundproofing our house, but that's not feasible right now, both financially and logistically. We've also discussed moving, but with a newborn and our jobs, that seems a bit to be overwhelming. Besides, why should we be the ones to move? Here's the thing, I don't want to call the police. The last thing we need is neighborhood drama and who knows how McQueen would react. My imagination runs wild thinking about the possible confrontations and retaliation, but it's getting harder and harder for me to bite my tongue. Each time I hear that car, I feel this anger bubbling up inside me. What would you do? Let me know some advice down below, and I will update you if anything happens. Update number one. Hey guys! Wow, so it's been two weeks since my last post, and things have escalated beyond my wildest nightmares. It happened early one morning, a day that started out like any other. At about 7 o'clock, as the first golden rays of sunshine just trickled in, a monstrous roar thundered through the neighborhood. The car was not just being started, McQueen was revving the engine, to the point where it made popping sounds like firecrackers. I swear for a moment I thought gunshots had erupted outside our home. Instant panic, I jolted out of bed with my heart hammering so hard, I thought I was going to burst. I rushed to the nursery to find my daughter crying hysterically. While my wife was doing her best to soothe her, her eyes filled with a mix of rage and helplessness. The entire house seemed to shake, and not just from McQueen's obnoxious revving, but from the emotional threatenings to overflow. I looked at my wife and the look in her eyes urging me to do something, anything to make it stop. I whispered to her, I'm going to sort this out, before handing our baby back to her, so... I stormed out, still in my pajamas, hair a mess, and an anger etched onto everything inched in my face. As I approached McQueen's house, the scene before me was absurd. McQueen sat in his car, windows down, blasting some hard rock music, letting his car be idle with a bass that shook the very ground. 
I just walked up to it. I mean, I mustered every ounce of courage I had and approached him, knocking on his window to get his attention, and I tried my best to be civil. I said, Hey, McQueen, the car is too loud, man, especially this early. You're waking up the entire neighborhood, especially my baby. He turned to me with a little smug, dismissive smirk on his face, the kind that you just want to slap right off if you weren't raised better. He did not say a word for what felt like an eternity. Then, leaning close so I could feel his breath, he said, Get the duck off my property. I've had this car for months. Nobody's complained. Deal with it, loser. I was stunned into silence, the audacity of this man. As I backed away, shaking with rage, McQueen revved this car once more, just shooting me a challenging glare before he sped away, leaving a trail of noise and smoke in his wake. I returned home, angry, replaced by a deep, simmering rage. I relayed the confrontation to my wife and her comforting embrace, the only thing that keeps me grounded. She made me some coffee. And as we sat in our kitchen, the weight of the situation pressed down on us. The hum of the coffee machine and the aroma seemed to bring a semblance of normalcy. But inside, I was so angry. Every fiber of me being crying out for justice. McQueen's arrogance was the last straw, and I knew this was not the end. It's time for action. Stay tuned. Update number two. The week following my confrontation with McQueen had been especially hard. Our baby's sleep was constantly disrupted, leading to frayed nerves all around. My patience was wearing thin, and I kept hoping somebody else in the neighborhood would voice their displeasure, especially after McQueen's early morning revving spectacle, but alas, no one did. Late one night, I was rolling out the garbage bin, enjoying the brief moment of quiet with the dim glow from the streetlights created a serene atmosphere and the only sound was the distant hum of crickets. As I looked around, my gaze settled on McQueen's car parked in his driveway, its windows conspicuously rolled down. For a split second, a wild impulse flashed into my mind. I tried to shake out of it, telling myself it's too rash, too petty. But I was sleep-deprived and had some pent-up frustration and a little bit of temptation I could not resist. Without fully comprehending what I was able to do, I darted towards McQueen's car in a fit of childish rebellion. I pulled my noodle out and with adrenaline surging proceeded to urinate all over the seats. The dashboard, the steering wheel, it was very petty. But in the moment, it felt like a big relief as the liquid left my body. It was a small victory against the audacity and arrogance of my neighbor. Having emptied my bladder and my frustrations at the same time, I zipped up my pants, casting nervous glances all around. The night seemed even quieter now, with the faint glow from the streetlights feeling like the spotlight on a stage. For a moment, I was paralyzed by the thought of being caught. But there was no moment, no sign that anyone's ever seen my reckless act. So I made my way back to my home. Wow. My heart thudding in my chest, each beat echoing the mix of triumph and fear coursing through me. My wife and baby were deep asleep. Obviously, to my, uh, well, late-night escapade, they were oblivious. I decided right then and there that I would not share this with her. It was my secret. A singular act of defiance in the silent war with me and McQueen. I'll let you guys know if anything else happens. I'll update you. Final update. The last couple of months have been a wild whirlwind. A few days after the incident, McQueen was on my doorstep. I opened the door, and the look on his face told me something was amiss. My heart was racing and my palms were sweaty. Did he know? Had he seen or guessed something? Hey, I was wondering if you noticed any kids running around and causing mischief at night. My car's been messed with. Uh, was this a veiled accusation or genuine curiosity? Doing my best to seem nonchalant, I said, Ah, oh, man, haven't noticed any kids. Just trying to keep mine quiet. To my surprise, McQueen chuckled. It was the first time I'd seen him in anything other than his confrontational mood. Oh, uh, look, man, uh, I want to apologize for the other morning. This wasn't fair for you. It's been tough. Work's been demanding and, well, my ex-wife has not made things easy either. 
That car, it's been my escape, my small bit of joy in this chaotic life. Somebody dumped some foul-smelling stuff in it, man. Could not even drive it for the next couple of mornings. It smelt like pee. Could you believe kids would do something like that? My insides churned as I fiend surprise, expressing my disbelief at the audacity of these children. <laughs> but the days that followed were marked by a strange change. McQueen's roaring beast of a car never purred or growled again. Instead, a modest, compact car took its place in the driveway. The noise, the bane of our existence, was gone. Days turned into weeks, and I never saw or even heard the old car again. One afternoon, I found myself chit-chatting with McQueen over the fence. He nonchalantly mentioned, I sold the old car. Mold started growing inside of it. Those damn kids messed it up good. Uh, thought of you and your family when I picked out the new one. Didn't want to bother you good folks anymore. Well, just like that, I felt the guilt hit me like a freight train. This man, already battling his personal struggles, had lost the one thing that he said brought him a shred of happiness. All because of my mold-infested abilities. Well, I guess you can say the metal in the engine was a symbol of resilience, his fight against the world, and I took it away. Anyways, McQueen had been robbed of his joy, and in return I was left with a gnawing feeling of guilt. Am I the a-hole for peeing in my neighbor's car? Let me know what you would have done. Comment number one. Honestly, when my neighbor had a similar loud car, I just called the cops. They assessed the situation and he was given an ultimatum. Modify it or face fines. OP, while I understand your frustration, I feel like you might have taken some extreme leap without really getting to know your neighbor. Let the professionals handle it next time. I think that you're the a-hole here. Comment 2. Ha! <laughs> Gotta admit, that was pretty funny and definitely a petty move. Anyways, after weeks or even months of the audacity of the audio of the torture of the car, who would not be driven to the edge? I didn't really see an a-hole in this story. Sure, both parties could have been approaching better, but hey... I also didn't blame him. Comment number three. I really can't fathom how OP thought it was the mature way to handle things. Vandalizing somebody's car, really. Especially after learning more about the neighbor and realizing he's not that bad of a guy. OP is hands down the a-hole here. So, at first, my opinion was OP is not the a-hole. But, I don't know guys, maybe I'm getting soft after all these stories. And I'm leaning a little bit more towards everyone sucks here. And let me explain my reasoning. I think one of the commenters sums it up the best. If the neighbor was so truly disrespectful and loud, why didn't OP just call the police? Yeah, maybe if OP would have called the police, then the police could have handled it, checked out the car, said, hey, this is actually an illegal modification, it can't be this loud. None of that was taken, and it just seems like OP jumped to something so extreme so quickly by basically ruining the interior of the car by peeing on it every single inch. Anyways, that could have led to a lot more problems in my opinion, but maybe I'm just getting soft and maybe OP really isn't the a-hole. Let me know your thoughts about it, guys. Drop it down below in our comment section. And we're going to take a look at story number two on the day. It's an Am I the A-hole story. Title is this. Am I the a-hole for my revenge against my basketball teammate that made him quit the team? Let's jump into that now. Hey, guys. I'm a 16-year-old kid, and I've been playing basketball for my high school junior's varsity team for a couple years now. It's been a massive part of my life since I was little, and I genuinely love everything about the sport. But lately, I'm struggling with some team dynamics, and I need an outside perspective. So, here's the deal. Most of my team's solid. We all get along and have a shared love for the game. We hustle hard on the court, joke around during breaks, and support each other both in and out of practice. But then... There's Roy. Roy and I have been on the same team for a while, but recently his behavior has started getting on my nerves. It began with small pranks during practice. One day, I'd feel a hard hit on my head, and, well, only to turn around to see him chuckling with a basketball in his hands. 
Yes, the same basketball he just threw and bounced off my head. I tell him, dude, cut it out. But he just wave it off, laughing and mocking, Oh, can't take a joke. I tried to let it go, hoping it was just a phase, but his antics grew more frequent and obnoxious, like one time, after an exhausting practice session, we were all resting on the benches. We were just chilling, and then Roy had this brilliant idea to, quote, cool us down. Without any warning, he takes this massive gulp from his water bottle and then sprayed it out of his mouth all over us. It was revolting, he stood there laughing like a hyena. While the rest of us were dripping wet trying to comprehend what just happened. It's just water, guys. Chill out. And let me be clear, it's not just me he picks on, though I seem to be his favorite target. Roy has this annoying tendency to bug everybody. Some of the guys are kind of close to him, and sometimes they even join in on the shenanigans. But most of the team, well, they find his behavior frustrating and immature. There's been multiple instances where even his friends on the other team have told him to chill out, but it's like it goes in one ear and out the other. There was even a day when we had an important game. Our coach gave us a pep talk, stressing teamwork and unity. I hoped that perhaps the importance of the day would keep Roy in line. Boy, was I wrong. In the middle of the game, I was open for a crucial shot, and instead of passing the ball to me, Roy, with a smirk on his face, decided to take some wild shot from half court, missing it entirely, and I could see our coach fuming from the sidelines. We lost the game, and while it can't all be pinned on that one shot, it definitely did not help. It's getting really hard to be around Roy, let alone play on the same team. I'm passionate about basketball, but every practice session is becoming a test of patience and restraint. I don't want to make a big scene or escalate things, especially since the season is set at a crucial juncture. Am I overreacting? Update number one. Hey guys, I'm back. It's been three weeks since my last update and a lot's happened. With Roy and the team, things have gotten to the point where I'm seriously considering getting even and I need some guidance. First, let's talk about our poor teammate. Let's call him Jason. Jason is one of the key players of ours. Like most of us, he's been having issues with Roy. Last week, after a particularly intense practice session, we all headed to the locker room when... Roy, with that all-familiar mischievous glint in his eyes, decided to freshen up the atmosphere by unloading an entire can of Axe body spray. As the pungent smell filled the room, it became unbearable for some of us. Jason, who was directly in Roy's line of fire, told him to stop. He warned Roy that if he did not stop, he would retaliate, but Roy, always trying to push boundaries, ignored him and continued to spray Jason. Without another word, Jason, fueled by frustration, punched Roy right in the face. Roy immediately went down and, wiping away a face full of tears, ran straight to the coach. Jason tried to explain, but the end result was detention for Jason and a suspension from the next two games. This incident infuriated the majority of the team because we've lost our game primarily due to Roy's poor performance. And now, thanks to his childish prank, we were down another key player. The mood in the locker rooms, on the courts, and even during breaks became more tense and fragmented. A few of us, including me, tried sitting Roy down to address his behavior. But each time, he'd brush it off with a laugh or act like we were the ones overreacting. Oh, you guys take things too seriously. It's just fun. Are you all so uptight for... Our team's morale is at an all-time low. The unity we once cherished is slowly dying, and it's not hard to pinpoint the reason. A few days ago, after another dismal practice session, I found myself chatting with some teammates outside the gym. We shared our Roy-related frustrations and began fantasizing about how to get him back. The idea of a revenge prank took root. We haven't settled on anything specific, but... There's a burning desire among a few of us to give Roy a taste of his own medicine. To finally make him understand the weight of his actions. Anyways, I'll update you guys if anything happens. Update number two. Hey again, OP here, and boy do I have an un 
update for you. <laughs> Two weeks have passed since my last update, and to say things took an unexpected turn would be an understatement, so brace yourselves. After Roy's endless shenanigans and pranks, the boiling frustration within a group of us finally reached its tipping point. And a late night chat. Somebody jokingly suggested putting laxatives in Roy's water. Though we all laughed about it initially, the idea strangely stuck. The logic behind it was simple. Give Roy a taste of his own medicine and hopefully make him realize how his pranks made others feel. While none of us truly understood the full effect of laxatives, thinking it would just be a minor inconvenience and send him running to the restroom, the plan went ahead. The next day at practice, we had some distract Roy, while I swiftly poured half a bottle of flavorless oral laxatives into his giant water flask. With every sip he took during practice, my anxiety grew. I kept waiting for the signs, expecting him to clutch his stomach and dash off to the bathroom, but nothing happened. An hour ticks by, and then an hour and a half, and it seemed like maybe our plan was a flip-flop. Or I didn't use enough to cause any real effect. However, as the session was drawing to a close, Roy's demeanor changed. He hunched over, clutching his stomach with a pained expression. Moments later, to the horror and amusement of many, he had a very, very visible accident sliding down his leg and onto the court. Laughter erupted from all sides. Some shouting, look, Roy just crapped himself. The poor guy was paralyzed in embarrassment and for a moment before sprinting to the bathroom, leaving behind an unfortunate trail. The putrid smell quickly engulfed the gym, and our coach, clearly taken aback and clueless about the prank, told everybody to get to the locker room now and take cover. There were roars of laughter and whispers of speculation. My co-conspirators and I exchanged both triumphant and guilty looks of pleasure. I felt victorious for a moment, so now I'm just left with a mix of emotions. There's an undeniable satisfaction of Roy getting some poetic justice, but there's also the guilt of maybe going too far. Did we cross the line? Let me know what you think down below. Final Update Hey everyone, it's been two weeks since the incident and the fallout's been intense. To cut to the chase, Roy has not shown up to practice since that day. Rumors about what happened spread like wildfire throughout our school, and while many found it amusing, others felt it was downright cruel. Either way, it became the hot topic of conversation. Several teammates reached out to Roy, trying to convince him to come back, but Roy was not having it. From what I gathered, the humiliation hit him hard. I don't know, I guess I can't blame him. While part of me was relieved not to deal with his antics any longer, another part of me was ridden with guilt. The goal was never to ostracize Roy to the point of him quitting the team. However, every coin has two sides. The other part of me, the part that keeps me up at night, is filled with regret. Yes, Roy was obnoxious. Yes, he disrupted our practice sessions with his silly antics, but did he truly deserve such a drastic consequence? I would like to know what you guys think. Here's the thing. Maybe it's just me rationalizing, but I also believe that this could be a wake-up call for Roy. If there's one thing I wish for him, it's introspection. A chance to reflect on his actions and perhaps mature from this experience. I hope this incident makes him realize the importance of empathy and the consequences pranks can have on others. Once again, let me know what you would do in the comments down below. And thank you, that's my final update. Comment number one. Everybody sucks here. Look, I get it. Roy was a pain to be around and from your account had zero chill. However, what you and your teammates pulled is a whole different level of cruelty. A little prank, maybe, but this was psychological warfare and bordered on dangerous. I mean, you don't know how he would have reacted to the medicine anyways. Comment number two. You're the a-hole. As somebody in the medical field, using laxatives, especially in unknown quantities, can be very harmful, potentially putting Roy in some serious danger. Prank should never risk somebody's health. It would not have hurt to consult with somebody knowledgeable before going down this road. You're the a-hole OP simply because you're the one who poured the medicine into his water. Comment number three. Everybody sucks here, but not for the reason that everybody's pointing out. While I don't really blame Jason for throwing a punch at Roy, sometimes you need to stand up to a bully. You guys, though, did not do that. You definitely crossed the line with the laxatives. 
if Roy was that annoying, maybe you should have just given him a good old-fashioned knuckle sandwich, like Jason did, instead of this drawn-out so-called prank. Anyways, you guys lost a teammate. Alright guys, so I didn't really think about that, one of the commenters, by saying, you are the a-hole OP, I'm a doctor, and I'm just gonna tell you it could have been extremely, extremely bad to give an unknown amount of medication to somebody. That didn't really cross my mind at first, and I honestly, when I was narrating the story, thought it was a pretty innocent prank. But it turns out that laxatives in the wrong person and the wrong dose can actually have some very, very bad effects on their body. So I have to change my answer from OP not being the a-hole to everybody sucks here. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, drop it down below. I would like to hear from you guys. Ultimately though, OP ended up losing a teammate and at the end of the day, they were in it together. They should have bonded somehow and just came out on top and support each other. Guys, that's going to be it for today's videos. This is Mr. Redito's Revenge Channel, where everything revolves around karma or revenge. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. It's my newest channel, and you might have forgot to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.